What's up guys? This is me, Sir Ernest, and today we will have an example related to multiple expansion. Here the problem reads, problem 3.27, a sphere of radius r centered at the origin carries charge density given by this equation, where k is a constant and r, theta are the usual spherical coordinates. Find the approximate potential for points on the z-axis far from the origin. So this problem entails us or allows us to use a multiple expansion uh, uh, special technique because we're looking at points far away from our charge configuration. To do this, we're going to use multiple expansion for the potential. Now, as you recall, the multiple expansion of potential is given by this equation, where the following terms, this term, this term, together with this coefficient, and this term, together with this coefficient, are your monopole, dipole, and your quadruple uh, terms or contribution plus of course some higher order like octopole and so on and so forth as you will notice that each term is actually a power of 1 over r okay where 1 over r is for monopole 1 over r squared is for dipole and our 1 over r cube is your quadruple. Usually, okay, we just uh, end our approximation at the quadruple term because high order terms, let's say your octopole, which is 1 over r to the fourth power, because you are looking at points far away from the sphere, so that contribution of 1 over r to the fourth is usually neglect so in this problem we're going to approximate the contribution the we're going to look at the contribution of the monopole dipole and the uh, and the uh, quadruple term so let's start so the monopole contribution let's use uh, this pen so the monopole contribution is now given by 1 over r times integral of rho theta. So this is equal to 1 over r times integral of this. So this is k r r squared times r minus 2r sine theta times d tau which is in spherical coordinate system that's r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi so as we expect uh, we can rewrite this uh, integral as follows so this is 1 over r times uh, kr times integral of um, r minus 2r dr so r minus 2r dr times r squared or just simply
Oh, sorry, no more r squared. Sorry about that. Because remember that this should be small r squared. Okay. So this is r squared. This is cancelled with this. So this should not be here anymore. Okay, sorry about that. And then, sorry, this should be, and then, integral of sine squared theta. So, sine times sine is sine squared d theta times integral of d phi. So, d phi will be from 0 to 2 pi, the usual. This is from 0 to pi. And it is from 0 to r. Okay, so this is now equal to. Uh, this is 2 pi and then this is 2 so this whole term is actually 4 pi you can just do the integration on your own so this is 4 pi k r over small r times the derivative uh, the integral of this which is um, r r minus r squared evaluated from 0 to r so when r is equal to r so this is r squared minus r squared so this is 0 and then minus 0 so this is actually 0 so what does it mean it means that the monopole approximation will not contribute to the total potential that you want to calculate. Next, uh, dipole contribution. So for the dipole contribution, we have um, 1 over r squared times the integral of r cosine theta rho theta so again placing all the values here we have 1 over r squared times r cosine theta times k r over small r squared times r minus 2 r then times uh, sine theta this is your raw and then theta would be the same so that's uh, r squared sine theta dr d theta d v so it's quite long but we can actually simplify this as follows so you will notice that again just like here uh, just like here where r squared is cancelled this time um, r squared is also cancelled and then we combine cosine theta with sine squared theta and then we combine r with r minus 2r so that means I can now rewrite this as k r over r squared times the integral, let's say for r, so we have r times r minus 2r dr from 0 to r times the integral of cosine theta sine squared theta d theta from 0 to pi and then lastly this is integral of d phi from 0 to 2 pi so we will know that this is equal to 2 pi okay however if you're going to notice if you're going to integrate this this integral Okay, we have, so 
So this integral is sine squared cosine theta d theta. So this is sine cube theta over 3. This one. Let's call this integral i. So integral i will be equal to sine cube theta over 3. Evaluated from 0 to pi. Sine 0 is 0. Sine pi is 0. So this is actually equal to 0. So therefore, the dipole contribution is also 0. Now let's see what happens if we have the, if we evaluate the quadruple contribution. As you will notice, the, as you increase the order of your contribution, the longer the solution that we have. <laughs> so I just want everybody to be as, uh, as patient as possible. Okay, so let's uh, move on to quadruple. Let's use blue. So we have the quadruple. contribution so your quadruple contribution would be 1 over r cube times integral of r squared um, times 3 halves cosine squared theta minus 1 half raw theta okay so again, similarly, we can evaluate this as follows. That's 1 over r cubed times integral of r squared times 3 halves cosine theta squared or cosine squared theta minus 1 half times kr over r squared times r minus 2r sine theta times r squared sine theta dr t theta d so again it's quite long okay but we can simplify this as follows for example we can uh, cancel r squared here and then we can combine uh, we can take out the constant kr okay we can combine r squared here with r minus 2r and then we can combine this term with sine theta squared or sine squared theta here and then we separate the fee okay so that means this can now be written as kr over r cube times the integral of r squared times r minus 2r dr times uh, times the integral of so this is three halves and this is one half so we can place one half outside times three cosine squared theta minus one then sine squared theta then d theta integral of d phi. So again, d phi will range from 0 to 2 pi. This theta will range from, oh, sorry, phi will range from 0 to 2 pi. d theta will range from, <coughs> sorry about that, excuse me, will range from 0 to pi. 
and then this one will be range from 0 to R okay so what I want you to do is to uh, do it on your own so you may pause this video and do the integration okay okay now if you did the integration here this will now be written uh, can be written as k over r over r cube this one will be equal to uh, negative r to the fourth over six this integral will be equal to negative pi over 16 and then of course this integral will be equal to 2 pi okay so simplifying this uh, for example uh, we can cancel this with this this becomes 8 so that's 6 times 8 that's 48 so therefore, the quadruple contribution for this configuration will now be equal to k pi squared times r to the fifth divided by 48 r cubed. And you will notice that this is not equal to zero. So that means for four points along the z axis. Means R C the potential is approximately equal to the quadruple term, which is one over four pi epsilon times k pi squared r to the fifth divided by forty eight z okay so that's it so this is the potential approximate potential of this charge configuration for points far from the sphere okay so this ends our solution to problem 3.7 i hope you learned something and thank you for watching I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.